It's almost as though we are constantly teetering on a brink of war. But what if I told you that it was nothing compared to the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 during the heart of the Cold War, one of the most dangerous points in history, where everything came down to the decision of one man. Let's go above the brain and analyze the story of Vice Admiral Vasily Arkhipov. The Cold War began on March 12, 1947 with the Truman Doctrine right after World War II. It was Winston Churchill who first made mention of the significance of Soviet influence. If now the Soviet government tries by separate action to build up a pro-communist Germany in their areas, this will cause new serious difficulties in the American and British zones and will give the defeated Germans the power of putting themselves up to auction between the Soviets and the Western democracies. The 1950s were filled with extreme superstitions regarding communists in the United States. And the Red Scare, as it was known, followed after Senator George McCarthy swore that he had a list of communists that never really existed. Regardless, McCarthyism drummed up the necessary amount of paranoia within the country that there would now be a whole list of people of both actors and politicians that would be blacklisted. I think a communist, physical appearance counts for nothing. If he openly declares himself to be a communist, we take his word for it. By the end of the decade, and with American paranoia regarding communism brewing, 1959 became a very important year. The Cuban Revolution had succeeded, and Cuba was now under the leadership of Fidel Castro who rejected all American beliefs and sided with the Soviets. With Cuba being only 90 miles away from Florida, the United States was now on high alert. With the situation escalating by the day, President John F. Kennedy gets elected in 1960, and though the president was usually against wartime acts, being a former soldier himself. There will not be under any conditions be an intervention in Cuba by United States Armed Forces. And this government will do everything it possibly can, and I think it can meet its responsibilities to make sure that there are no Americans involved in any actions inside Cuba. The military leadership behind his back launches a plan to overthrow Cuba with their CIA operation that would become known as the Bay of Pigs. The operation that was known as the Bay of Pigs had taken place from April 17, 1961 to April 20th of 1961. The CIA had trained 1,400 Cuban exiles to try and overthrow the Cuban government, but Fidel Castro and his military were prepared for an attack and succeeded in destroying the enemy. But in August of 1961, the Soviet Union also erected the Berlin Wall, which was designed to prevent communist East Berliners from fleeing to West Berlin. It is not quite clear how many people died, but it is said that over 200 Germans were killed attempting to scale the wall before it had been completely built. Before we get to the rest of this video, we would just like to say that we appreciate all of your support. We'd also appreciate it if you could subscribe to our channel, as almost 99% of all of our viewers are not currently subscribed. Now let's get back to the content. John F. Kennedy's poise was being tested by Khrushchev, and by the fall of 1962, American spy planes discovered that Castro was installing nuclear missiles that were easily capable of hitting U.S. targets. This is the backdrop that would be known as the Cuban Missile Crisis, which is a four-day confrontation between the Soviet Union and the United States, which would ultimately lead to the missile scare that would last over a month. But the most important day in history started on October 27, 1962. A group of 11 United States destroyers and the aircraft carrier known as the USS Randolph located a nuclear-powered Foxtrot submarine B-59. It was simply one of the four nuclear submarines that were sent by the Soviet Union, but it is without a doubt the most important one. Despite the submarine being in international waters near Florida, the U.S. Navy began dropping signaling depth charges which were intended to force the B-59 to come to the surface so that it could be identified. With tensions being as high as they were between both nations, this is also an extremely dangerous move. What the U.S. Navy did not know at the time was that the Russians on the B-59 
had not had any communication with their superiors in Moscow for some time. But nor did they really need to, as they were instructed to shoot their specialized nuclear torpedo at the United States at the first signs of war. As the B-59 attempted to evade the U.S. Navy, they were now too deep to monitor any radio traffic, and all they could hear above them were the depth charges blasting away, assuming World War III had already begun. As the conditions worsened due to a limited battery and the air conditioning on the submarine no longer working, Captain Valentin Grigorievich Savitsky and two other generals were ready to launch the nuclear torpedoes towards the United States and go out in a blaze of glory. But unlike any other submarine in the flotilla, where the captain was the only one who needed to approve the firing of a nuclear torpedo, Savitsky required approval from both his political officer and Ivan Simonovich Mosilenikov and from his chief of staff in Vasily Arkhipov. And despite Mosilenikov siding with Savitsky in the control room, Arkhipov refused and stood his ground. Luckily, his reputation for an event that happened one year earlier known as the K-19 incident helped to convince Captain Savitsky. Though Arkhipov was the only crew member on the entire submarine against the launch of the nuclear torpedo, he was able to convince Captain Savitsky to surface and get orders from Moscow. Since the batteries on the B-59 had run very low and the air conditioning was no longer working, there was a huge buildup of carbon monoxide, which ultimately saved their lives, but at what cost? They surfaced in front of the pursuant U.S. Navy and were forced back to Moscow in disgrace. One admiral even said to the crew that they would have been better off if they had just gone down with the ship. The disdain that the crew received was felt throughout Moscow. But in reality, Vice Admiral Vasily Arkhipov was a hero of upper proportions that would go completely unrecognized by his own country. With the Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara saying, we came very close, referring to World War III. And as the historian Arthur M. Schlesinger Jr. said, this was not only the most dangerous moment of the Cold War, it was the most dangerous moment in human history. And without Arkhipov's stubborn and calm demeanor during such a voracious desire by the crew to use nuclear arms, who knows what would have become of the world? We know for certain that it would have caused an all-out nuclear war between the United States and the Soviet Union, and that that would have included the cost of millions of innocent civilian lives. Not to mention the extensive damage to the planet that would have been devastated by such high levels of radiation, and the millions of people who would not be alive today, including myself. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Thank you for watching this Above the Brain production. If you could please like, subscribe, and click those bell notifications, it would be greatly appreciated.